und 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 Okay, so we're going to make a little hammer. Um, made this guy a day or two ago. Really like it. Um, it's got some weight to it. You can choke up on it, get a nice solid hit. Uh, watched a video by a guy named Rex Kruger, and that's where some of the plans and designs for this came from. Uh, he talked about this little curve down here as being a way to index your hand. So you don't have to look at the hammer, you can just put your fingers on it. And it helps you sort of align where you're hitting. That way you know where the handle is when you really need to get some weight behind it, you can back off of it. But getting up here, you can do detail work and this sort of extra gripping ability and indexing of where the head of the hammer is. So nice stuff. Um, when I did mine, I uh, just put one spline in here to spread this out and hammered that in and then glued it uh, off. And of course the curve is kind of a nice touch. The angles on this are seven degrees. Uh, the overall size comes from a guy named Peter Sellers and he's kind of famous in woodworking circles, but he sort of recommended a seven inch block by roughly four inches thick and at least four inches tall. And, uh, and so I sort of scaled up instead of what Rex has offered here, I've scaled this up. Of course, now that I have this, um, I can see how this is great for some things, but maybe not great for everything. So I'm going to make a slightly smaller version of this. So took this big, uh, piece of, this is maple, I uh, locally sourced here in McKinney, found a guy that sells this stuff. He's, he's a really nice guy. And, uh, at the time this was about an eight foot long a piece of this and it's been chopped down and chopped down so that part of it ended up becoming my vice. These are the blocks. This is a cast off. We're going to put these guys together like this. This will become the meat of our head here. And then we have to, of course, get our handle inside here. Handle will be maybe a little shorter, but roughly the same dimensions as this. So yeah, that's the plan. And I'll try to take pictures and a little bit of video so you can see the process. Okay, so handy dandy vise, lock that guy in there. This is called a low block plane. It's a smaller plane. There's a little blade that sticks up here at the bottom and uh, you can use this to shave down little pieces of off of the surfaces. So you see these tiny shavings. So um, anyway, it's a really lovely tool to use and you can either go all the way through or you can use small circular motions like this. Of course, the reason I'm using it is I was having a little bit of trouble getting the two blocks to fit together. Which told me that one of them is not quite level. So when I put these together, I don't want to see a gap forming. Notice this slight gap over here on the right hand side. I wasn't thinking very clearly. This is one and a quarter, but we're going to build a little shoulder onto it. Uh, so somewhere in this area, we're going to cut in and go down so that um, that will allow the mallet head to come down and meet the shoulder and that'll keep it fixed in place a little bit better, at least from the downward angle. So um, this needs to be reduced now into one inch and the width of this is one inch. So if I just smack it on there and I have measured out where it's centered, then I know that this is going to be one inch. Okay, so the camera will probably shake when we get started on this, but in the meantime, uh, this is the sled, right? So we can move this back and forth. This helps us brace pieces down here when we're doing weird cuts like this without getting our fingers too much in the way. Um, we do need to raise the saw blade height. So I'm gonna set this guy to a half inch and we're going to raise the height to that. It's fairly close already. So I just want it to just kiss the edge there. That's about it.
And the idea is that if I line up my cuts, then and put a stop block on each side, then we will know where to start and stop each cut. you don't want to use a hammer you can also just do this just be careful of your fingers because couple little things. We trimmed some parts off of this. Uh, here's our shoulders. We narrowed this down a bit. All of that because I didn't want to chisel out too much more of this hole to get it to fit. So the idea is it will go in this way and it's still a tight fit, but I think with some hammering it'll go in. I just need to clean out some little glue areas and some ridges and, uh, and then I think we're gonna be pretty much good to go. So something you may not be able to see very well, but maybe if the light catches it, you can. These are the areas untouched by the plane. Uh, so different kind of tear or shear on the grain of the wood. So this means that I need to get down to here to finish this off and keep it all smooth. Um, once you have one of these planes tuned up, they're pretty amazing.
Okay, so that's our top. A little more to do here. 